Okay, so I wanted to make this video for a very long time because there used to be a video on YouTube by CJ Ponyports and it was for the install on this car for the long tube headers and it got removed because of the lame whack music that they used in the background. And it's like, oh my gosh, there's no one else on YouTube that uploaded anything. So I wanted to go through a little list I have on my phone and it's on what you need to know about when you're doing long tube headers, okay? So the first one I have is you will need to remove the K-member. That is the whole front suspension and it is not fun to do that. I mean, who knows, maybe there is a way to install long tube headers without dropping the front suspension. It just seems nearly impossible. So just take my word for it. Even CJ Pony parts dropped the front suspension and they did it on a lift. So that tells you a lot. So I got this chain hoist or, you know, engine hoist right here. I picked up the motor a tiny bit and then I dropped the front suspension. You could always buy one of those things from Harbor Freight. I believe they're called engine support bars or something like that it's like 80 bucks you could always do that that'll make your life much easier yeah that's definitely one thing you need to know is you will need to drop the front suspension and you will need an alignment afterwards i don't care how how precise you get everything lined up it's still gonna feel very floaty when you go to drive the car after you install long tube headers next is it definitely is a must to have power tools, even impact air guns. That's what I use. Yeah, removing these front suspension bolts are really high torque and it's not easy to remove them with just anything you have laying around. So <laughs> don't be thinking you can do this job with just a, you know, a 3 8 ratchet because it's not happening. Also, you're going to need penetrating fluid. Please get yourself a can of penetrating fluid or even the whole gallon i mean that's what i did i got the whole gallon and i filled this baby up and yeah just spray everything down every single bolt every single nut every stud everything. everything do that the day prior that you're gonna do the long tubes and you're gonna see that it's just gonna be so easy to take everything out once that penetrating fluid does its magic you're gonna be picking up the motor, you're gonna be dropping the front suspension. It's it's a whole mess. It's really not easy to do long tubes on this car. You know, maybe there's like a 60 year old guy out there that's been doing this type of job their whole life. And they're like, kid, I can do long tubes in two hours. Yeah, I, I don't really know if you could even do that, but hey, uh, most of us, we're just working out of our garage and we don't really have much to work with. We just want to install long tube headers on our Mustang and that's it. So uh, I obviously don't have a lift. I had to do everything on jack stands and you most likely will have to as well. So keep that in mind. This job is probably a tiny bit easier on the lift, but it's still, it's still very time consuming. So at least plan for like a whole weekend to do this job. I have BBK long tube headers. You probably can't even see that. This is from my front facing camera. It's so hard to position this correctly, but I have BBK long tube headers, ceramic coated. And it's definitely worth the price. Sure, you can go on eBay and get the cheapest set of headers that you see. But the issue is, is that you're going to run into fitment issues. Now, if you're an exhaust guy or a welder, that's really not a big problem. But for people who don't really know how to do those types of jobs, fabricating, then um, yeah, just, just pay the price for a good set of headers. What I like about the BBK headers, I'll try to put a picture on screen, is there's actually a little notch for the steering shaft. I haven't seen this on any other header, 
maybe maybe I'm blind, but uh, that's definitely a nice little thing to have because when you install long tubes on this Mustang, there is like no clearance whatsoever. It's totally insane. I'll insert a bunch of pictures in here. You can see how tight of a fit that is. It is, wow. Because when I pulled out my long tube headers for the second time to fix an, ex an exhaust leak that I had from the BBK gaskets, you could literally see scraping marks on both of the headers. And they were pretty bad, but I mean, it, it didn't go through or anything. You could just see that it rubbed on something. And it's weird because I'm on stock suspension, or I'm sorry, I'm on stock springs. Well, not anymore. Last year when I installed my headers, yeah, I mean, everything sounded fine. It looked fine. And then I pulled it out and I see a bunch of marks. So yeah, definitely don't worry about if you see any scuffs on your headers. That's totally normal. It doesn't matter if you pay an expensive price or you buy the cheapest. It's kind of all the same deal. It's just going to be a really tight fit. I had to go in here again, take both headers out and replace the gaskets. Why? Because I made a mistake. I used the supplied BBK gaskets that came with these headers. That, I mean, they looked okay, but they were so bad. I might even have them laying around somewhere here. Uh, I don't, but I'll put a picture on the screen. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, what? Aftermarket stuff is garbage for the most part. And this was a very good example of the aftermarket piece that you should not use on your header. What I did is I went to Rock Auto and I just tried looking for the exact OEM gasket, multi-layered steel, because I was gonna buy the Ford one for like a hundred million dollars and that was just a big mistake. So what I did is I went to Rock Auto, got the Melling or Fell Pro, whichever gasket I got. I got that part number, looked it up on Amazon and uh, I had it shipped like the next day. So that was nice. It was like 30, 40 bucks. I definitely would recommend those gaskets over anything else because yeah, trust me. I remember being on Mustang forums, listening to people say, don't use those BBK gaskets. And then others were like, oh, well they're, they're very nice. I haven't had any leaks on them for over three years now, but here I am barely with like six months on the freaking gaskets and then i hear a nasty exhaust leak oh that was very hard to actually fix it that was like ugh. But I'm glad it's fixed now. So if you can, if you already have your original Ford gaskets in your car, you could probably reuse those over and over. They'll be fine. You just have to trust me on that. I mean, yeah, if they're completely shot and bent, don't use them. But more than likely, they're going to be perfectly fine. I threw mine away on accident and they were in, well, I don't really know if they were in good condition or I just didn't know any better and I just tossed them. But learn from my mistakes. Use OEM gaskets. Next is to have your steering wheel locked when you go to do the job. So this is how it's going to look. I can't flip this camera, unfortunately. So I'm just going to have to kind of eyeball it. So this is a straight steering wheel. All right. It's going to be a little offset, just a tiny bit. So there's no way to get this completely straight locked. But just try to get it nice and straight. And then like that, there you go. You heard that click? Yeah, that thing's not moving anywhere. So when you go to put everything back together in the steering shaft, it's just gonna be so much easier. But even then it can be a hassle. So don't freak out if you have everything perfect and you go to fix everything up and it doesn't line up. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> also, you are going to need to unscrew. You can't even see it. Dude, come on, camera. Whatever. You're going to need to unscrew these little plastic fender well liners. What you're gonna want 
is some special pliers that are for that. I can't find them for the love of me, but it essentially looks like a fork. I believe it's called like a, a push pin rivet remover, something like that. And you're going to need these bad boys right here because when you take them out, these little push pin clips, when you take them out, they're gonna be trash. I really don't know if this is the correct size for this car. I went on eBay and just tried my best to see if these were the ones and they fit. They fit every single little hole that was in here. And even on like some, some parts on the car, like even, like the back bumper, I was able to, cause there's like a couple missing underneath. So put a couple of these bad boys and it fit. So no complaints, I'll put, I don't know what size they are, but I will put a link in the description so that you get what you need. Next is you will need, well, depending on the mileage, right? But it is a very good practice to replace the motor mounts and just anything that you can while you're down there because you're already there. What's a couple bucks? And you'd be surprised. Like my car only has about, well, at the time I had 89,000 miles when I did the long tubes. One of my motor mounts was completely shot. It had a lot of play in it. I've never noticed it, but it had a lot of play in it. And the other was fairly solid. So uh, just replace the motor mounts if you can. It will be very beneficial to you. I didn't go for any solid or polyurethane mounts. I wanted to go polyurethane. I don't know. I just couldn't see myself paying the price for something. Because um, there's people who say that there's a difference and then there's people who say, yeah, I ran everything. And I, I never noticed any difference, even with cams. And it's like, okay, I have cams. I would love to be shaken to death in this car if I were to get, you know, the polyurethane motor mounts. But, oh, well, I just got some rubber ones from AutoZone. They fit perfect. No complaints there. I also made sure to do my transmission mount. And I also did my outer tie rods because when you drop the whole front suspension, that's your time to fix anything that you see bad. Any ball joints, just anything that you see that looks like it's seen better days, just go ahead and replace it. That's what I did. So that might add a little bit more to your cost of the overall install, but hey, it's perfectly fine. You're, you're doing it for your own safety. You will also need a shorter mid pipe. So I don't think you're going to be able to see this. Nope. <laughs> so I have BBK catted H pipe with the long tube headers and I called it a day. That's all I needed. I didn't want to go with the whole new different setup. No, it, this worked for me and it sounds good. I know this gets really expensive and I'm really sorry to keep bringing in more costs. I was able to do the long tubes the first time with my dad forcing in the dipstick that came from the factory i was able to still relocate the factory dipstick well my dad did it but yeah it was a very difficult task you're going to need pry bars please do yourself a favor buy a set of pry bars before you do this job the second time we did the long tubes the dipstick just broke at the bottom it didn't break in the block thank god but where the bottom of the dipstick mounts to the block that piece kind of broke off when we were trying to push it in so my brother was like hey i'll buy you the flexible dipstick that you always wanted i'm like yes thank you a hundred freaking dollars dude who, who spends that much money on the dipstick but it's a very nice unit it's like a million times easier to fish around the long tubes. There's like no fighting that you need to do with it. And to mount it, it's it's definitely not going to work the same way that it worked from the factory on the old dipstick. So my dad was like, hey, why don't we just mount it to the little brake booster reservoir thingy? I'm trying to get a good view of that. There you go. So here's where we mounted it. Now, this dipstick, the little hole, 
it wasn't enough to actually fit in here. So what we did was we just, you know, got a little step bit, drilled a tiny bit into this little bracket and it fit in there perfectly fine. It's like so solid. I hope you can see that. It's, it's solid, it's not going anywhere. So it's a nice unit. You can pull it out. You can still check your oil and uh, it's fairly accurate. So I would highly recommend that unit or else you're just going to be having a very hard time. I'm trying to see if I could find those studs that I got from Ford. Um, doesn't seem like I can find them, but what you will maybe have to do is it's weird because on these bbk headers it comes with bolts and everything but the issue is you can't use all of those bolts there's gonna be a few spots in both sides where you have to use a stud either a stud or just a bolt that's like so tiny so keep that in mind you may or may not have to take a trip to the ford dealership i i know it hurts to say that but I paid like $26 for a pack of uh, header studs and I only needed one. It's like, dude, I had to pay for the whole set. Whatever, man. You will more than likely run into clearance issues when you're installing the bolts, but just kind of feel it out. Also, you will need O2 sensor extenders for your headers so don't forget that or else you might be like what the heck why is it not fitting and also if you're still using your stock o2 sensors when you go into plug in the extenders it's not going to physically fit so what you're going to have to do is you're going to need to take a pair of cutting pliers and there's going to be like two tabs one right here and one right here on the the o2 sensor it's either the o2 sensor or the extender i believe it's the o2 sensor itself so don't forget to do that because that's one thing I learned from that CJ Pony Parts video that was taken down. Like I kind of mentioned before, I had to run to the Ford dealer for some studs. And it's probably going to happen to you where either there's going to be bolts that are just completely rusted out or you're just going to need a new bolt that you lost or something. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to call a Ford or Lincoln dealership nearby you. And you're gonna need your VIN number. Your VIN number is gonna be right here, okay? At the driver's side, right here. And you're gonna give them that VIN number. I believe it's, they just asked for like the last eight characters. One thing I've learned about working on this car is you just can't find bolts. You really can't. It, for the header bolts, I mean, you, you, you just really can't find any bolts anywhere. Even you go to Ace, uh, the auto parts store, any sort of hardware store they're more than likely not going to have the screw that you're looking for especially if you're working on this car sure you can get lucky and find something simple if it's a simple bolt like you know the bolt that mounts here for the cold air intake or you know just the factory intake for that matter yeah of course you can find a bolt anywhere but if it's something special like the header bolts good luck dude after everything is installed when you start the car, you're gonna notice a lot of smoke coming from both sides of the engine. So don't freak out, that's totally normal. What that is, is the coating for both of the long tubes burning off, okay? So don't freak out. When, when I started up my car for the first time, I'm like, what the heck? And after like 10, 15 minutes, you'll notice the smoke goes away. And to top it all off, I would really, really recommend a tune because even if it's just a mail order tune, you don't need an expensive dyno tune for long tubes. You know, and a simple email tune from someone like Brent Speed will be more than enough because with the long tube headers, if you compare the stock exhaust manifolds versus the long tube headers, it is a very major difference and the o2 sensors they're probably gonna freak out like oh my god this is too much air being pushed out what do we do so just make sure to top it all off with a tune because it is going to be necessary the car still might feel fast it might run great even without a tune but it's just cheap insurance if you're gonna do something right 
might as well uh, put the icing on the cake with the tune. And that's pretty much all I have to say. One more thing though that I forgot to say. When I did this job, I dropped my transmission to replace the clutch and resurface the flywheel. Why? Because it was about that time and when you install long tubes, it's very difficult to drop the transmission. Let's say you have long tube pairs already installed in your car and you want to change out the clutch or let's say your throwout bearing goes out. Oof, I don't really know what to say about that. I'm sure there's a way out there to drop the transmission without removing at least one long tube. I haven't figured it out and most of you probably haven't either. You will need to drop this passenger side header to get enough clearance to drop the transmission because it is a really tight fit. I just don't see how you could actually wiggle out the transmission with this header still in there. If you're gonna be doing long tubes and you have a manual transmission, do yourself a favor, do the clutch while you're there. It's gonna be a lot of work and it's gonna be more money to pay up front, but you're gonna thank yourself later. You really are. I feel like I'm still missing something, but if anything, I'll add it in at the end of the video. So. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped uh, at least somebody out there because this is just not an easy job. And with that being said, is it worth it? Hell yeah, it is. It's so cool. With the long tube headers, you definitely notice the car sounds more like like, it just sounds mean. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, the long tubes definitely make the car sound just a tiny bit louder. There's some people that say that makes the car quieter. I don't know about that, but it definitely made my car just a tiny bit louder. And also, if you have a full exhaust, I barely found this out like a week ago. If you have a full exhaust, and what I mean by that is you have, you know, all new piping, through the cap back and whatever. It's gonna sound like a turbo. I know that that sounds weird, but when you rev up the engine a tiny bit, or even when you're driving around, you can kind of hear a little sound. And it's it comes literally directly from right here, the headers, like this spot. And it makes sense. So I didn't know that, but headers really make your car sound awesome, especially on a two valve Mustang. As for any performance gains, I don't know. I did cams and full bolt-ons and a new clutch. I couldn't really tell the difference, but I'm sure long tube headers are a great investment. I'm honestly confident to say that the long tube headers really do help the engine breathe more. and. It all depends what kind of modifications you have in terms of any gains. But I would say you'll probably get a good 15, 20 horsepower gains. Something like that. I don't know. I've never dined with my car. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I think. Will you be much faster? Probably not. So don't think that, you know, just because you bolt on long two pairs on the 4.6 motor, that's gonna be like driving a supercharged car. No, that's totally wrong. It's gonna be worth it though, trust me. So with that being said, I feel like I've been talking for so long, so sorry about that, but hopefully this was informative and I will see you guys later.